Um, and I think that most people would. Now, the, the, fact, the fact that you have people in your life who are saying to you, oh, you're totally a woman, that's exactly what I'm talking about. No one in my life has ever once said to me, you're totally a man, Matt. You know, if, my, if, 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 if a friend of mine called me on the phone and said, listen, Matt, I want you to know you're really a man, I would think that there was something wrong with him. I would say, why are you saying that at all? It doesn't make any sense. So Woke culture, love it or hate it, it's everywhere. From classrooms to social media and even corporate boardrooms. But one man, one voice is cutting through the noise with facts and brutal honesty. Matt Walsh. How Walsh, with his no-nonsense attitude and sharp wit, dismantles woke culture. But beware, this might get uncomfortable. Matt Walsh is not your everyday pundit. He's not just another talking head throwing out buzzwords. No, Matt Walsh is a professional debunker. His mission? To expose the madness of woke culture. And trust me, he's having way too much fun doing it. One of the problems with this left-wing gender ideology is that no one who espouses it can even tell you what these words mean. It's like, what is a woman? Well, can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Whether it's gender debates, cancel culture, or the never-ending safe spaces discussion, Walsh is relentless in his pursuit of what he calls reality-based thinking. And let's just say it's making a lot of people very uncomfortable. It all started with a simple question. A question so controversial it sent shockwaves across social media. A question that sparked heated debates, endless think pieces, and even protests. What was the question, you ask? What is a woman? It's like, what is a woman? Well, Can you tell me what a woman is? No, I can't. Walsh's documentary, What is a Woman?, didn't just challenge woke ideology, it ripped it apart. By pressing activists, professors, and everyday people to answer this seemingly simple question, Walsh exposed the inconsistencies and confusion within the modern understanding of gender. Spoiler alert, no one could give a straightforward answer. Imagine that. A society obsessed with gender politics unable to define what a woman is. You can almost hear the irony dripping off the screen. And the best part? He didn't even have to argue. The woke movement did the work for him. How would you define a woman? Because you've asked other uh, people up here to define how we would define a woman. How would you define a woman, Mr. Walsh? Uh, an adult human female. And how don't trans people, how doesn't a transgender woman fit that definition? Female. Because they're not, they're not female. They, they, they have, they have, you said that you are, a biological male, correct? I said I'm transgender. Um, I might be intersex for all we know. About uh, almost as many people in the world are transgender as intersex. And well, a lot of people don't know. Well, wait, but that's a different conversation. Intersex, that's a genetic anomaly. That's a medical condition. So let, that's a completely different conversation. That's also not a, that's not a third gender. That's just a, that's a genetic anomaly that occurs within the sex binary of male and female. Um, a... So you, what you're saying is that a quote-unquote trans woman is a female? By the definitions I'm familiar with, yes. But it's not just about gender. Walsh believes woke culture is eating away at the very fabric of society. His latest targets? Diversity, equity, and inclusion policies, and the so-called safe spaces, popping up in universities and workplaces as mointh. According to Walsh, these policies, though well-intentioned, are a mask for something far more dangerous. He argues that DEI creates division where unity should be. By focusing too much on race, gender, and identity, Walsh warns that we are sacrificing merit, truth, and worst of all, freedom. DEI policies, safe spaces, sounds great on paper, right? But Walsh argues that in practice, they're nothing more than an excuse to control speech and silence dissent. And when you think about it, that's pretty terrifying. Imagine a world where your opinions could get you fired, or where simply disagreeing with the mainstream gets you labeled as a bigot. Walsh believes that's where woke culture is leading us. Women, you want to reduce men down to maybe just their genetics, our genitals, no. our chromosomes, right? That's what you're what saying. You want to do that is that's a, what what, you, what you want to do is appropriate women. You want to appropriate womanhood okay. and turn it into basically a costume that can be worn. And then there's cancel culture, the ultimate tool in the woke arsenal. Step out of line, say something offensive, or question the narrative, and boom, you're canceled. No questions asked. Walsh is no stranger to this tactic. 
From the moment he started pushing back against woke narratives, he's been a prime target for cancellation. But here's the thing, they keep trying, and yet, Walsh only grows more popular. He's the guy who looked cancel culture in the eye and said, you can't cancel facts. And let's be honest, it's kind of hilarious watching him troll the woke crowd with this level of confidence. So how would you define female? Through my training in healthcare, there are several different categories for how we define sex. People bring up pr chromosomes. People also bring up hormone levels. People bring up all sorts of other categories. Lots of people don't fit neatly into a gender binary, even people we don't consider to be intersex. So, is woke culture starting to crack under the pressure? Walsh seems to think so. As more people grow tired of constantly walking on eggshells, he believes a backlash is inevitable. He's not alone in this belief. Polls show that many Americans, across the political spectrum, are growing frustrated with the extremes of the woke movement. They want to have honest conversations without being attacked, and they want common sense to prevail. Walsh's message is simple. Reality will win. No matter how hard woke culture tries to redefine the truth, people will eventually reject it. My question to you is, what specifically about medically transitioning do you think is so immoral that we should ignore the potential benefits? And why should I listen to you as somebody who's not a medical professional and has not experienced gender dysphoria? There's a dishonesty behind it. Dishonesty in the false promises that they make, which is that you can attain this image of uh, maleness or femaleness, or that you can actually become in some ways the, the opposite gender or sex, whatever words you want to use, which is a lie. It's not true. Matt Walsh isn't just fighting woke culture for the sake of it. He's fighting for something bigger, the right to speak freely, to think critically, and to live in a world where facts matter more than feelings. Whether you agree with him or not, one thing is clear. Matt Walsh isn't going anywhere. And as long as woke culture continues to dominate, he'll be right there, challenging it every step of the way. What do you think? Is Matt Walsh right about the dangers of woke culture, or is he missing the mark? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more in-depth discussions.